Welcome to this month's episode of Titan TV, a student-produced news show for Victoria East High School. I'm your host, Maddie. This month, Gabby caught up with one of our track athletes, Kylie explored what STEM will look like at East, and we dive into another podcast segment, School of Fish. Lights, camera, get in on the action. Our correspondent, Gabrielle, took some time to speak with one of our track athletes. The boys and girls put in many hours of practice in order to perform their best. Let's listen in as she interviews Carly. Hi, I'm Gabrielle Reyes here with Titan TV, and this is Carly Curley, our varsity little track star. I want to ask her a couple questions about track. Okay, so what is your favorite track event? I would have to say the 800 meter run, because I did that like through the whole entire year of middle school and now this year. Was there any like memorable 800 that comes to mind? Yes, whenever I won district in eighth grade at the Quero district meet. <laughs> Do you have any pre-race rituals, like any odd ones you could tell us? Um, no, I mean me and you know, just like the girls, we normally just pray before we just go out and run. Um, but that's really all. We sometimes just like do a little like handshake or like a little jump before we go on, <laughs> but that's all. What would you find to be the most challenging part about track? Mainly your mindset. I mean, you're always, you're always gonna have like negative like negative thoughts whenever you're about to run, like, oh, I'm not gonna PR today, or somebody's gonna beat me, or this girl looks like just really scary, but normally just probably just a negative mindset. Even like with those challenges, like what made you really wanna do track in general? Um, mainly just seeing like people really like reach for their goals in track and running is like mainly one of like the main coping mechanisms I have if I'm ever like stressed out. So probably just that. And our last question for you, what is your ultimate goal as a track runner this year? Well, in general. Just in general? Um, probably getting a scholarship for track or going into like a D1, D1 college for track. Oh, thank you for sharing yes. with us, Carly. Lights, camera, get in on the action. Welcome to Titan TV, where you get the inside scoop on extracurricular activities at East High School. We cover sports, clubs, and student life each month. What's up, Titans? We're here at the U.S. Band Competition. Action. Hello. Hi, I'm Kamari, and I'm here with Titan TV. Join us for a look at what's happening around campus. Victoria East High School was recently awarded a major grant for STEM education. Kylie reached out to Ms. Rodriguez, who will be helping to oversee deployment. She shared with us what this money means for our students and their educational opportunities. Here we go. Welcome back to Communicating with Kylie, where we ask the big questions. I'm your host, Kylie Powell, and today we're here with Mallory Rodriguez, I am the Magnet Schools Program Grant Manager. Today we're going to be talking about STEM and the grant that we've been awarded. So firstly to start off, East was recently awarded a grant for STEM education. Explain to the audience what the acronym STEM stands for. So that's a really great, great question when we're talking about STEM. So STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, um, which basically integrates, um, it's an in interdisciplinary um, approach to critical thinking and problem solving that integrates itself into STEM, which is again, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. And can you explain the amount and the duration of a STEM grant? Um, this is another really good question, and it's an exciting question to answer. So this is actually a five-year grant, um, and so what that means is every single year we're going to be awarded um, so much money. And so this year we received our first award in October of 2023, which is going to run through September of this year, and that first award was $3 million. Um, and so each year we'll receive more money, which at the end of the five years will be a total of $15 million, and we have the possibility of extending that into a sixth or seventh year. And what programs do Smith STEM Academy and STEM Middle School have in the pl have in place right now? 
So they have a lot of different things that in place that's really exciting. But I want to, before I answer that question, I want to understand that they have been on a journey. So in 2020, um, Smith STEM Academy received the School Action Fund grant, which started um, the STEM Pathway integration at their campus. And then the following year, STEM Middle School um, started their journey on the STEM Pathway. And so throughout this year, again, we're in 2024, it's taken them some time, but they have some great things in place. They have um, Makerspace Labs, which allows the students to go and do hands-on experiences and projects that are just for that. And then they also have projects, um, the PBLs that they do that are across all content areas. They have after-school activities and clubs. They have homework clubs. They um, have partnerships with communities. It's just really exciting to say that the fifth graders, um, this is the first year that they are having internships. And so there's a lot of different programs going on and they are continuing to grow. And how might East expand on these current programs? Um, there's a lot. This is something that we're kind of still in the works on. We've been talking a lot with your principal, Mr. Gavrish. Um, there are a lot of things that the grant is supposed to outline with the hopes for you guys. So just like Smith and just like STEM Middle School, there are lots of hopes that have already been laid the foundation. This isn't something that's brand new and it's just gonna amplify what's going on here. Um, it's gonna give you guys the opportunity to receive more resources, more, um, a little bit of everything. <laughs> really just, it's exciting. You'll have a lot that's gonna be coming your way. And STEM instruction is a very popular trend in education right now. What do you think has caused this emphasis in recent years? Um, I think the simple answer to that question is we live in an innovative world and there has been a rapid advancement of um, technology overall and so um, it's been projected um, right now STEM workforce, STEM careers, they are growing twice as fast as any other occupation and that is simply because we are living in a very rapid world that we kind of can't keep up with. So I think that's a huge importance. Sure. And what do parents and community need to know about STEM education in VISD? I think it's really, really important to know that STEM is not a curriculum. It is not something brand new that we're adding. Um, STEM is a pedagogy. So in other words, that is how we teach. And so we're not teaching anything new. We are still teaching by the standards that are outlined by TEA, our TEKS. Um, but this is how are we presenting what we are teaching to you guys. And I think it's really important to know that it's hands-on. Um, we all learn differently, and STEM is another pathway for you guys to have your own personalized learning experience. How will this grant affect current and future students at Victoria East High School? Um, I think it's gonna do a lot of things, and there was one student here at Victoria East High School, her name is Kristen Hernandez, I believe, and um, she said something that was very powerful. She was giving her uh, testimony to what STEM has done for her and why she loves it. And she said that she has a younger sibling and that sibling is actually at Smith Academy and she cannot wait for her to have the experience, not only in elementary, but middle school and high school. And for me, that says a lot. That says that it was so powerful for a student, an older sibling to say, I can't wait for my sibling to have that. Um, and so this is going to grant you guys a lot of more hands-on experiences. Um, it's gonna give our teachers the opportunity to learn as well because teachers, educators, we're learners too. We're ongoing, just like you students. We're constantly learning, we're trying to keep up. And so now we can fund that training that then turns around into the classroom. We're able to buy new equipment and stay up to date and just provide you guys some different opportunities by even bringing in different programs and field trips and entrepreneurship. So, there's a lot that's gonna happen. I'm really excited. And I think that's really important for our region because Victoria, we're the healthcare hub, right? We have lots of our healthcare um, careers that are here as well as our chemical industry, right? Our petrochemical industry with lots of plants. And I think what it's gonna do for the future of the Victoria students, if you guys, is you're gonna leave here finding your and, right? But you're gonna leave prepared for the future because we're giving you some of those things because again, STEM is doubling in the workforce, so. Absolutely, and finally, how can the community get involved in promoting STEM education? 
So one thing that we uh, really focus on is partnerships within the community. And so definitely with our businesses or anybody that has any background in STEM, um, we're wanting those people to come in, let us know, hey, I want to mentor a student. Hey, I want to um, be a judge at you know any of the science fairs that you have. We want to come in, we want to be a part of what's going on. How can we help? Um, so don't be scared to ask those questions, but I think most importantly for our parents, for our community overall, is to be supportive and be an advocate for STEM. And I think the importance of that is being educated on what is STEM and what STEM is not and the benefits of it. And overall, it's really to help our students um, enhance their educational experience so that when y'all leave here, you have those 21st century skills. You leave here with the portrait of the graduate. Um, and so to really know what that is and advocate it and be supportive. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, Ms. Rodriguez. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. This has been Communicating with Kylie. I'm Aiden, and I'm the host of podcast Music My Show. Tune in to my podcast and more on Titan Radio. Tonight is a special night for our student honorees who are being celebrated, for the families who love and support them, for our staff members who have the privilege of working with these exceptional students every day, and for the school board and community members who are here to celebrate our student honorees. Tonight, each campus will recognize two groups of students. Our Board Excellence Awards recognize students who have demonstrated exceptional performance. Students receiving the Excellence Award perform at the top of their class for academic performance while also maintaining outstanding attendance and conduct. Tonight, we are also celebrating students receiving the Growing in Genius Award. In DISD, we encourage all students to pursue their genius and achieve their and before they walk the stage at graduation. This award recognizes students who have demonstrated outstanding academic progress while also exemplifying the traits outlined in our pro uh, portrait of a graduate and moving closer to their and. Hi, I'm Alana with Titan TV and I'm here with Ashley Alvarez, the Executive Director of Communications for Victoria ISD. And what event are we at today? So today we are at the VISD Board of Trustees Excellence Awards. And this is the event um, at the end of every school year that the Board of Trustees hosts, honoring the top five and top 10 students from fifth grade through 12th grade. And last year we added a Growing in Genius um, award as well that honors um, fifth grade through 12th graders and those students are selected whereas academic awards is based on your um, top 10 students of your grade level. The Growing in Genius Award really takes characteristics from our portrait of a graduate and um, honors and recognizes students who are making strides um, in school in other ways than just academics. Awesome. Where did Growing in Genius come from? So VISD began our work in defining our leadership definition, um, really focused on the staff and employees of VISD, and we've extended that um, beyond just the staff to our students. And so we are growing in genius, we're leading in genius, we're reaching in genius. Um, there's different attributes to each um, endeavor across our leadership definition and so growing we want to see growth in our students and that is um, one of the aspects that we have attributed to our students and so we want to recognize their growth and the work that they're putting in and this is where we're doing it. Oh well, awesome well thank you so much for letting us have some of your time and answering these questions with us. No problem! 
Hi, I'm Alana with Titan TV, and I'm here with... Ella Shannon. And I just had a few questions for you. Now, what award did you receive tonight? I, I received a Growing a Genius Award. Nice. Um, what does this recognition mean to you personally and academically? It shows me that all the work I have put in through the year, it has really paid off. Hmm. And um, what challenges did you face reaching this goal? And I how stayed, did you overcome that? I stayed up late nights after mm. getting home from softball games and everything oh. and volleyball and just all the homework late at night. But I got it done and it obviously paid off. So. Yes, it did. Well, congratulations on Thank your award, you. and I wish you luck throughout all of your years in high school. Thank you. Of course. We're back at the awards, and I'm here with... Taylor. And I just had a few questions for you. What award did you receive tonight? The uh, Excellence Award, the Board Excellence Award. Nice. Um, what does this recognition mean to you personally and academically? Um, it's actually very, like, exciting for me, and I feel very proud of myself. And what um, challenges did you uh, face throughout the school year and how did you overcome them? I play volleyball so it's very hard like balancing them out, but I would say I did really good at balancing them out. Oh, well, nice. Well, thank you for answering these questions with us of and course. I wish you luck throughout all your high school. Thank you. Thank you. We're back at the awards and I'm here with... Colin Flussner. And I just had a few questions for you. What award did you receive tonight? Uh, I received the Academic Excellence Award. Nice. And what does this recognition mean to you personally and academically? Uh, you know, it means a lot. It just shows off the hard work throughout this year and all previous years. And um, yeah, it just means a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, what challenges did you face reaching this goal? And how did you overcome them? Uh, you know, just being a junior, the more workload and all that. But yes. overall, just hard work, effort, and you get through it. And do you have any advice for any students that are wanting to reach this goal like you did? Uh, never give up. Uh, keep trying, work hard, and anyone can do it, you know? All right, well, thank you. Thank you. Perfect. We're back at the award ceremony, and I'm here with... Allie, Allison Schmidt. And what award did you receive tonight? I received my top 10 award. Oh, nice. And what does this recognition mean to you personally and academically? Um, uh, personally, this is just like a goal that I've kind of set for myself for like my entire life. Each year I strive for this and whenever I get it and they call me in and they tell me that I made it, it really just makes me feel good about myself. Uh, and academically, you know, it just puts me on the right path and motivates me to do better. Nice. Um, what challenges did you face reaching this goal and how did you overcome them? Um, it's very stressful if you want to, you know, kind of rank high, you have to take hard classes and that's very stressful. So it's a lot of time management. I've overcome many challenges, especially balancing it with dance, but I did it and we're here today. Mm -hmm. And how do you plan to build on this accomplishment in the future? So I'm actually going to go to college and study mathematics. So I'm going to keep, keep that motivation with me, keep that drive, hopefully land a good career somewhere in the future, hopefully in finance and economics. And I'll just, you know, live my life to the fullest. Yeah. <laughs> and do you have any advice for any students that are working to reach the goal that you have? Um, definitely reach out to your resources. And you know, if that may be a teacher, a friend, anybody, definitely reach out through extracurriculars, through anything. Just getting yourself more involved is just going to put you in that mindset to where you will constantly would want to do better. All right. Well, thank you and congratulations, Ali. I'm very so proud much. of you. We're back at the award ceremony and I'm here with Kendall Stimson. And I just had a few questions for you. So what award did you receive tonight? I received the Board Excellence Award. Nice. And what does this recognition mean to you personally and academically? Personally, I have always been such a diligent and hardworking student, and I put in so much work. So to see it finally get recognized is amazing. Mm -hmm. And what challenges did you face reaching this goal, and how did you overcome them? I take a lot of AP classes and a lot of dual credit classes, which can be extremely difficult, but those weights are worth it, and I'm so glad that I have maintained such great grades. And how do you plan to build on this accomplishment in your future? I cannot wait to eventually go into law school and maybe even own my own dance studio. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> and what is some advice you have for students who are reaching towards the goals that you have? Even though it may seem extremely hard and the classes can get overwhelming, I highly suggest just pushing through and continuing that motivation. So find something in your classes that makes you happy and keep at it. All right, well, thank you and congratulations, Kendall. Thank you. Okay, 
We're back at the awards and I'm here with Madison Heller and I'm just gonna ask you a few questions. What award did you receive tonight? I got Achieving Genius. Okay. And what does this recognition mean to you personally and academically? Well, for me personally, it's something, just a little bit of recognition of, you know, things that I've gone through in the past years and how as a senior, I've really just achieved my genius and achieved my end. Academically, I believe, you know, it's been one to be able to, you know, um, push me in my academics. I've always been able one to be kind of lacking in that area. So mm -hmm. this was a little bit of recognition on that. Nice. Um, what challenges did you face reaching this goal and how did you overcome them? Well, I was faced with a ton of challenges, whether it be elementary school or middle school with death and, you know, divorce and all that kind of stuff like that. But, you know, it was just me being a person who is there to persevere and stay strong in my faith to simply get really over all those challenges to become the person I am today. Nice. Um, and how do you plan to build on this accomplishment in your future? Well, I plan to go to Texas Tech University and be on the nationally winning meet judging team. Okay. So going there, I really see myself building not just my own voice, but a voice for the agriculture world and helping more people understand what really goes on in that. Nice. And do you have any advice for students that are working to achieve the goals that you are? Um, we'll just be always open to opportunities and be always open to say yes, not be so closed off mind like, oh, I might be out of my comfort zone. Be able to go for that goal because one day those goals might seem little, but they'll lead you to the bigger goal at the end. All right, well, thank you and congratulations, yes. Madison. Thank you. Two of our ninth graders, Delicia and Celeste, host the successful podcast titled School of Fish. It was our most listened to show of 2023. You can keep up with all of our podcasts on the Titan Radio Spotify channel or Apple Podcast. They interview fellow freshmen about their experiences in high school. Let's dive in. Hi, I'm Delicia. And I'm Celeste. And this is School of Fish, where we talk about freshmen's first year of high school. And today we have... Naomi. Naomi, how has your freshman year been so far? Um, it's been pretty good. I like it here. Do you do any in-school programs? Yes, I do P-TECH. What's P-TECH? P-TECH is basically like a program that helps you get into early college, early to your future, and just basically what school is made for. What are the requirements to be in P-TECH? The requirements to be in P-TECH is you have to have good grades, you have to stay after school tutoring if you're failing, and you can't fail more than a 70 or below, then you get out because there's a lot of people who really want to get into P-TECH and you have to be eager to learn and about your future. What's the field you are in P-TECH? medical field. What's the position you want in the medical field? My position or the position I want to be in in the medical field is the ER physician. How do you balance your schoolwork and your exam tab? Um, well, I was in um, all like pre-AP classes in my middle school year, so I'm kind of like used to the work being all stacked up and everything. So I usually just stay after school, like tight in time or tutoring, so I can get all that done and just relax when I get home. Do you think being in P-TECH and studying being a nurse physician helps further your career in the future? I think it would make, yes, and I think it would make my career go by smoother than harder and make my college go faster than longer. Yeah, because you're like you're finishing early, right, with P Tech. So you're already you do you graduate your associates? Uh, I can. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Wait, do you have to have like certain credits? Uh the classes are the classes that you would need, like your credits. Oh, that's cool. So basically like we can't choose our own classes. They give us a set of classes. You that take we all would honors need. classes? Yes. Oh, that's a lot of work. Yeah. yeah, and I'm not even in any in school programs, and the work, work is yeah. like a lot, yeah. especially in math. I know math like is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Do you think P Tech offers like the help and support to manage like all your schoolwork and everything? 
I think it does because um, we have one of our periods is called a P-Tech grit class and it's basically like you walk into class, our teacher's Miss Heinchel and she basically just gives us like it's called like study time to where you get to catch up on all your work mm -hmm. and checks our grades and everything. I mean, I think it, I think it's good because now like I think being a P Tech because I'm not in P Tech, but hearing you talk about it, I feel like I should have been in P Tech. I should have mm -hmm. applied for P Tech. Did wait? Did you have to apply for it or? How did you get into yeah, like how did you what start was the it? first? So, um, our eighth grade year, they took us to the theater room, and the lady who was like the manager of P Tech, which was Miss Hughes, she told us she told us about it, and she gave us this paper that had like the QR code and everything. And healthcare and engineering is here, computer science, and I can't remember the other one is at West. Oh, education. <laughs> so was like. 50 people, so 50 people was like the uh, district? 50 people for each like, category. And that was like the like east and west combined? Oh, dang. So like they just like picked y'all's name out of a thing? Uh, no, it was whoever got signed up first, but like the first 50 oh, people. So like first pick, oh, like mm -hmm. first come, so, first like, serve type. Like, so yeah. after she was done with the PowerPoint, she had told us, okay, y'all sign up. And my, I was already ready. Like my, <laughs> my information was already filled in. So I just went submit. Yeah. You already had it on your phone while she was yeah. talking. <laughs> so I was probably like the first person. Oh, you really wanted that pizza. <laughs> yeah. It's a good program. It really is yeah. a good program to help kids. Get started with their future. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you for tuning in for School of Fish. I'm Delicia. And I'm Celeste. And thank you, Naomi, for being here with us. Thank you. Bye. Bye. We would like to thank everyone who helped make this show possible. To keep up with all of our episodes, check out the Victoria ISD YouTube channel and listen to our Titan Radio podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. We've got a host of great shows, including Music Maestro, Winning Streak, Teacher Feature, Spoonful of Sound, Communicating with Kylie, and Movies with Miley. Bye! <laughs>